My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive. On the trial of the Flash, Flashback, a pontificating grot in a pentmobile, a cuckoo Fiona, and an argument for Obamacare? At the start of issue 334, not much is happening. Barry's lamenting about his situation that recaps the previous 11 issues. Well, while that's happening, the mayor is being lured into a dark alleyway by the Pied Piper. Also, while Captain Fry is at home having breakfast trying to solve the Barry Allen missing persons case, his cat is playing with the flash ring, or shadowing perhaps. Meanwhile, the Pied Piper keeps playing a tune for the mayor. While that's happening, the Flash visits Peter, but not Fiona. Never Fiona. Question. Why is the Flash wearing a surgical mask? Peter is injured, not contagious. Meanwhile, in court, the lawyers meet one another and one of the opposing counsel seems to want to bang the Flash's attorney. Well, at Captain Fry's house, the cat almost reveals Barry's secret identity. It seems the Pied Piper under someone else's orders made the mayor veto any funds to rebuild the Flash Museum. The purpose of this is to show a possible negative attitude towards the Flash, then the writer Kerry Bates is failing. Meanwhile, the mastermind is seen in shadow talking with the brainwashed mayor. I assume he's twirling his evil mustache. I can't be sure since he's in shadow and whatever. While all this is happening, a tabloid is trying to get juicy pics to sell more papers. It appears one of the things that the writer Kerry Bates is, wants to show is how bad the media is. Well, the paparazzi gets a pic of the Flash angrily poking the mayor and yelling, how could you stab me in the back with his mouth closed while he says that. At that exact moment, a cop arrives telling the Flash that he needs to answer a phone call from the police dispatch. Question, how did the cop know where to find him? If he didn't luck out and find him here, would he just drive around aimlessly until he found the Flash? Well, the voice on the phone says he'll blow up a news anchor at apparently the only at apparently the only news station in Central C, I guess. Well, Barry rushes over there and is seen on TV smashing the anchor's table. He did to look for a bomb which isn't there, and everyone starts to look at him as if he was crazy trying to kill the news anchor. The last image is of the Pied Piper seeing hands clasp and looking satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> so is the Pied Piper going to be the main villain of the story or is he just going to be the main villain for the next couple of issues? It's taken 13 issues, we have 16 to go, but finally something is being done to make the public turn against the Flash. The problem is it's just not believable. The issue opens with the Flash on live TV saying that he thought there was a bomb. We then see scenes of people all over Central City turning against him. Really? This did it? Not him killing the reverse flash or at super speed vibrating and tossing someone else possibly killing him. No, 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 no. That's okay, but not this. Plus, the anchor wasn't harmed. If the flash really did want to kill him, he would have been dead and no one would have seen anything. Also, the Flash was given misinformation on a police phone. Wouldn't the police have recorded the call or have it in their records? Well, this is the early age, so I need to check on that. Well, after a scene with the Pied Piper giving orders to a mind-controlled mayor, a couple of demolition experts receive a mission. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. Wait a minute, when did this become a Mission Impossible parody? So this is the Mission Impossible parody now? Okay. Well, anyway, it's their job to make a home go boom. Meanwhile, the Flash is having a contentious but brief chat with his lawyer, who's naked at the time. Question, how come no one at Captain Fry's house has found Barry's spirit Flash suit yet? It's kind of hanging out of the ring. Does no one clean up this house? Meanwhile, the Flash helps out a skater and then skates at super speed. The new B story seems to be a publicity rag, a National Enquirer type, is setting up to wiretap the Flash's lawyer's house. 
While this is happening, the Pied Piper is getting frustrated that the mayor is fighting his control. He forces the mayor to fly a plane and crash it. Why is the mayor always alone? The Flash is able to rescue him, but not Cecilia from a man-made avalanche. Well, it looks like Cecilia's dead. On the upside, the Flash finds out that the mayor was being mind controlled. Well, he goes to the Central City Police Headquarters to have Hey Spivet check out the device. Okay, on page 5, panel 1, it says that the Flash was forced to abandon his Barry identity. No, he wasn't. He could still pop up as Barry and clear a lot of the confusion. Ugh. Question though, page 5, panel 5. Why does Captain Fry look happy giving the Flash bad news? Oh, surprise, the dead woman wasn't Cecilia but a woman named Gigi. Gigi was introduced last issue and she's from the tabloid, but apparently Gigi was only introduced just to die. The real Cecilia happened to be in her sleep decompression chamber. Should she still be dead with the house and mountain falling on top of her? Well anyway, also on page 13, panel 1, just those crazy eyes. The Flash does some detective work and finds the thugs that planned the explosives and finds the mastermind behind it. But here's the problem. He's acting like a cop. Since he's abandoned his Barry Allen identity, he's no longer a cop and doesn't have any jurisdiction. Well, no matter. The slimeball lawyer Nathan tries to kill himself twice. Shouldn't Barry be fast enough to save him the first time? Well, that storyline resolved itself. Question from the last page. 1. Why does Cecilia Horton hate the Flash? And 2. Why does every man and woman have the same face? This issue begins with the mayor clearing up the misunderstanding and unvetoes and releases the funds to repair the Flash Museum. Captain Fry's cat continues to play with Barry's spare Flash suit and I guess we find out why no one found the spare suit. Meanwhile, at the police headquarters, Captain Fry and Cecilia Horton are having a conversation and we get a clue onto why she hates the Flash but not why she refuses to open her eyes though. At the same time, the governor's mother is being held hostage. The Central City Police Department, being skilled negotiators and all, are bargaining with the criminals with food. Barry saves her by catching a bullet with his teeth and spitting it back at the criminal. Also, it seems that everyone in the city now loves the Flash again. That was quick. While this is happening, Captain Boomerang calls Pied Piper a pansy for not fighting the Flash like a true rogue would. Also, it seems about after a dozen issues, Mrs. Fry finally finds the Flash ring. This issue ends with the Flash bailing the Pied Piper's Ultima Pipe and Speed Demons, which paralyzed the Flash. Still suffering from paralysis, Barry is able to barely escape and destroy the Pied Piper's lair. The Pied Piper mentally breaks down and is sent to a mental hospital. Meanwhile, Captain Fry uses the psychic Mr. Dreed in order to find Barry Allen. He does, but he doesn't. Meanwhile, the other rogues, Captain Cold, Mirror Master, and Captain Boomerang, kidnap a mental patient named Doofus from Breedmore Mental Hospital, arm him up, and manipulate him into hating the Flash. They name him Big Sir, and he looks ridiculous, but they do send him out. Oh yeah, while that's happening, Cecilia says that while she hates the Flash, she won't keep it from giving him the best defense possible. Uh, didn't she already say that in an earlier issue? Now while all this is happening, an accountant named Nathan Newberry is struck by a lightning bolt. Foreshadowing, perhaps? Hmm. Oh, and he has a ridiculous looking mustache. Ten days before the trial, Barry, as the Flash, hires a private detective to find out why Cecilia hates him. Question. Why can't he just do that himself? He has the time and all. And two. How is he gonna pay the man? The issue begins with the rogues setting up a fake trail for Big Sir, or oh, I'm sorry, Doofus P. Ratchet to follow in order to fight the Flash. The Allens are questioned about the events leading up to Barry killing the reverse Flash by the Flash's lawyer, Cecilia Horton. Meanwhile, Flash visits the Pied Piper at Breedmore Mental Hospital, but not Fiona, never Fiona. The doctor puts him at ease saying that it wasn't his fault that Harley Ratchaway, the Pied Piper's real name, had a nervous breakdown. Yes, because nothing in the story seems to stick to the Flash. The Flash does notice that Doofus is missing. Before the rogues send Big Sur against the Flash, they lay a lie on him saying that the Flash beat them up 
yada yada yada, stomped on a mouse, and so on. The Flash smacking around the rogues? Who cares? How dare he kill a tiny mouse? Oh yeah, a Crisis of Infinite Earths crossover happens when the monitor pops up, but not much comes of it. Well anyway, the rogues spring Big Sur onto the Flash and somehow he is unable to use his speed to beat him. And Big Sur beats him unconscious. The issue ends with Big Sur taking Barry off to some place private to deal with him. No, 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 get your mind out of the gutter, not like that. Next time on the Trial of the Flash. It's taken 17 issues, but finally the trial begins. Or not. Courtroom antics. Plastic surgery and brain enhancement by gorillas? Secrets from beyond the grave. And a betrayal most foul. Previously on the Trial of the Flash. Monologuing. A bad Mission Impossible spoof. A contentious discussion with a naked female lawyer. And a gratuitous death of an unimportant character. Which brings us to... The issue begins with Big Sur taking the Flash to a special place and the rogues start running wild around the city and recap the previous two to three issues. Meanwhile, Cecilia is going through the wreckage of her home and meets the psychic Mr. Dreed. Nothing comes of it. Uh, we're never gonna see him again, are we? After Big Sur chings up the Flash, he leaves to save more animals and somehow ends up stuck on a cliff even though he can fly. Also, he knocks himself unconscious. Meanwhile, the prosecution are drinking champagne, toasting to them taking down the Flash. A bit premature, guys. The trial just started this issue. Well, Flash is able to creatively escape and saves Big Sur, and now they're fast friends. The issue ends with the Flash arriving late to court. Why is he late? Can he run at light speed? The issue starts with the rogue still on a crime spree. While that's happening in court, Ralph Denby is called to the stand for the defense and recaps issues 323 to 325. Is he a reliable narrator? How could he remember everything that happened in those issues? Well, anyway, the DA counters by pulling out a pistol and shooting someone in order to prove a point. And it works. It's a kill shot! That's a kill shot! Meanwhile, Big Sur's causing a ruckus trying to save as many puppies as he can. While that's happening, the rogues plot to use Big Sur again to kill the Flash. If he succeeds, the Flash dies. If he fails, then Big Sur dies. They consider it a win-win. And a bunch of a-holes. As the trial continues with more people talking with their eyes closed, the investigator that Barry hired has dug up a clue on why Cecilia hates the Flash. Meanwhile, in the dick move, the rogues friendly ambush Big Sur at the animal rescue and mess with his mind and then send him again to kill the Flash. When he finds the Flash, he turns Barry's face into a Picasso painting. The issue begins with Big Sur on a rampage looking for the Flash. Meanwhile, Barry runs somewhere. Why did he pull on his mask? He looks like Quasimodo. No one will recognize him. Well, meanwhile, the rogues are drinking champagne to celebrate their not quite victory. Then we see the Flash collapse in the jungle and about to be eaten until he's saved by a gorilla with a laser pistol. Welcome back to Gorilla City, Flash. Solovar and the gorillas perform plastic surgery on Barry, but before that, he whispers something to Solovar. Foreshadowing, perhaps? With that taken care of, the Flash runs back to court. Question, how long did this all take? 30 minutes, two days, 64 seconds? Well, anywho, a DC Legends of Tomorrow cameo happens when the prosecution calls Rip Hunter to the stand. Wait a minute, time travel is admissible in the court of law? Well, this is the DCU, so... While everything goes downhill in a hurry in court for Barry, Big Sur is ambushed by another gorilla with a laser pistol. Or maybe it's just the same gorilla. I mean, all gorillas look the same, right? That's racist. Well, we didn't somehow jump from that scene to the rogues getting ambushed by the Flash and a hyper-intelligent Big Sur. You see, Big Sur had brain enhancement surgery done by the Grill City Simeons off-panel, of course. Well, with the villains defeated, the Flash and Big Sur have their goodbyes, and then the Flash meets up with his investigator and learns why Cecilia despises him. We won't, however, until next issue. The issue begins with what Barry learned at the end of last issue, but he decides to keep us in the dark about it. 
Meanwhile, in the deep future, someone or something has escaped lockup. But that's not important right now. Back in present day, the Flash abandons his child to learn from Captain Fry that Cecilia's father was a cop and he was killed by one of the Green Lantern's villains, the one named Goldface. You see, Daddy Boy died during ruckus. Now, I'm still not clear how this is the Flash's fault again. Hmm. Well, it's at this moment that Cecilia starts to piece together how it's odd that Barry's parents are at the Flash's trial even though he seemingly doesn't have any relation to them. But before she can figure out the Flash's secret identity, he kidnaps her and takes her to her dad's grave in order to convince her that he didn't kill her father. When that doesn't work, he runs away and just leaves her there. Uh, just how is she going to get back home? Well, anyway, in the future, a bunch of skinny bald men talk about someone who's going into the past to kill the Flash. Now, they're not going to actually do anything. They're just going to yap about it. Anyway, somehow Cecilia made her way home and while posing in bed like a Vogue model having a fit, she has a nightmare that when you think about it, the Flash caused, which leads her to confront Goldface in prison. Well, one contentious discussion and a creepy pasta face later, Goldface breaks out of prison, stealing her father's gold locket and takes her hostage. The Flash ends up saving her and then all is forgiven. The issue ends with the prosecution calling Kid Flash, not Wally West, Kid Flash to the stand. Wait a minute, it's bad enough that Barry was allowed to keep his outfit on, but Wally now too? Also, Wally's secret identity is, well, secret. So how in the blue heaven did they subpoena him? The issue begins with Cecilia telling Flash that Kid Flash was probably subpoenaed into giving a testimony. No, really? Still, how Wally's a retired hero and the world at large doesn't know that the Kid Flash and Wally West are the same person. <laughs> My brain hurts! <laughs> well, despite that, I can honestly say that this is the best issue so far. The artist Carmine Infantino transforms his art style to look as it did during the Silver Age. I also have to give props to writer editor Carrie Bates as well. Both the art and writing has a charm and heart that's been missing since this storyline started. The dialogue and the interactions between Barry and Wally throughout the years was fun and very emotional. Thanks a lot, guys. Props. The issue ends with Kid Flash on the stand stating that he didn't think it was necessary to kill the reverse Flash. That statement shocks everyone from the lawyers, the audience, the jury, the judge, even Speedwagon is shocked. Next time on The Trial of the Flash, an unnecessary unmasking, the triumphant return of both Captain Incredible and the Reverse Flash, the jury goes on a magic carpet ride, the verdict, and the true master villain is finally revealed, Sorta. Yeesh, I mean, look at him. Look at him. Yes, look at him.